This was the first America that I designed, the America Ellington. Uh, at the time, I believe it was like the year 2000, and when they asked me to design a shoe, I was like, I mean, I'd only been pro for a couple years, and I think it was just such like an honor at that time to be able to do something like that. I mean, I think that, you know, years go by and, and it's like there's so many people with so many shoes now. I took it as something really special. So I took it like I do my board graphics and everything I'm, you know, involved with. I try and take it really seriously. So along the, you know, along the years, I kind of would just take note to like little things that I'd see that I'd like and, and you know, what I would, what I was inspired by to make the shoe. Like I, when I, I was at like a Foot Locker or something when I was getting the ideas together and I saw an Allen Iverson shoe, there was this like this thing that he did with the shoe and it looked like it would had been dipped in like a bucket of paint, you know. This is the wild card and it probably won't do well, you know, and it like, you know, they were they were optimistic enough to probably make me at least feel decent about myself, you know, but I don't think there was much hope for it selling. And this one was actually probably one of the best selling shoes of mine. Like that colorway at the time did really well. Aside from that, there was always the, the KCK, the Kareem Duff shoe, which is some like, you know, that that was to me kind of like a, this Reebok style shoe that I liked a lot. And there was this this kind of this PU and the, the, the way that the cup sole was designed is somewhat similar to the KCK. And also another one that I kind of was inspired by was the DC Lynx. And I liked the Lynx because of the, the runner toe. So there was basically three main influences that I took for this shoe. I was working with the designer at Soltech, his name was Frank. I did a, a little EE to the side, you know, and then he just thought, well, why don't we just spin it around and we'll make it like a pitchfork type thing, you know? Something from when I was a kid, there was a shoe I had that had a metal, like the logo was in metal. And I just thought, if I ever got a shoe, I want the logo in metal, you know? And nobody really did that at the time. It's stupid now, you can walk by any shoe company and probably half of them have metal fucking logos, you know? It's not, it's just common, you know? But at the time I thought, I'm, I'm doing some different shit. I was on some new shit and they asked me to do a second shoe. It was like Mark Johnson's shoe was just before that and I was skating that because before that was like all rubber toe shoes. And so I, when I designed that, I wanted a suede toe shoe because I just thought that it caught grip tape better. It was just better to me. So when I was working on the second shoe, I thought, well, if I were to think from like a kid's perspective, I would rather have something that would last a little bit longer. So I put the rubber toe cap back on the, on the second shoe so that, you know, if a kid wanted a shoe that would last two months, well, I'd give him that. We were taking masking tape and we'd mask off the entire shoe. And so you'd basically, you'd have a, a you know, you'd have like a, 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 something to work with and draw on. You could sketch up your shoe on a piece of paper. And I, I could, you know, at the time, you know, everybody was doing it compute, in computers or AI files and stuff as well. But I always like sketch it on the, on the pad and then you tape off the shoe in masking tape, and then you sketch that design on the shoe, and then you can even put it on and get an idea of what that shoe would really look like. Yeah, I designed that, and I, I kept the kind of that same style from the first America was, was that, like, that kind of thing, which I guess became like the signature thing that I was doing, which was keep a color that falls through with the sole, and then uh, that way you could do a simple black shoe, and you can have something kind of simple like that on the side, but it's just something different or whatever. And like this one is lighter than the first, it lasted longer than the first, and it was less board feel. But you know, like it's crazy because you know, like like nowadays, if you put on something this thick, you'd be in you'd be you'd be in shock. They'd be on a roof in no time. It wasn't like I was like trying to do something different than any other shoe or anybody else out there. It was just like. I just wanted something that was like, I don't know, maybe a reflection of me. I, I don't know, I, and I kept the metal logos on it. So well, this was basically just a, a different, kind of thicker, more durable version of my first shoe. And that was kind of the, the whole idea behind it. Uh, shortly after we were doing that, I think it was less time in between the second and working on the third shoe, I have a, kind of an upper of a third America shoe that I was designing. And this one, I was like, one of my favorite shoes of all time was the SXL. And so I was, basically, I tried to make an America version of the Excel. And uh, it's just the upper, you could see, but you know, this was kind of a signature thing of, Excel, of the Excel, the triple toe cap stitching. And 
And then I did the Velcro, you know, up here because I was like, I don't know, I was just kind of separating it between the Excel. And yeah, that's that was up until I was approached by Angel Kabata to start Supra. This is as far as I got on the America um, Ellington Three. Yeah. <laughs>